Hey everybody, welcome back to Hot News. It's Monday. We are the show's number one news source for all of your trusted, related, hot, and fresh news. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy your time here. Just wanted to remind you that we are brought to you by UFD.Deals. It's a website that conglomerates all of the hot deals that are going around for hot technology that you might wanna buy with your hot money. So be sure to check that out in the link in the video description. It supports us, gives us a few extra bucks. You guys get things cheaper, you save money. It works out for both of us. It's a great thing. And before any of you comment, yes, my hair looks different. I happen to have this condition where the hair grows in instead of out. That's not a real thing, by the way. I know I look like a hairy, naked mole rat. Just get your comments out of the way now and let's move forward with today's hot news. Is 75 megabits per second on your phone too slow for you? Well, then I have good news for you indeed. It appears that T-Mobile and Nokia are partnering up for the world's largest 5G contract between two partners. T-Mobile is committing to giving Nokia $3.5 billion to build their next generation 5G network. 5G, in case you don't know, is capable of delivering up to gigabits per second of network speed. You can download all of Netflix in three seconds. That's how fast 5G is gonna be, I think. Um, I'm not sure if the math works out there, but 5G is coming, T-Mobile looks like they're supporting it and they're investing heavily. Let me know what you think of this. Do you want 5G, are you okay with 4G? Is LTE not even in your area yet? Let me know down in the comments. In other news, Reese still hasn't given us a jingle and sucks at pressing buttons. Now let's move on to something he does care about, the DJI Mavic 2. It appears that the DJI Mavic 2 Pro is looking to have a Hasselblad camera. I don't even know how to say that company's name. Hasselblad, Hasselblad, Hasselblad. I'm a little en energized today in case you can't tell. So it looks like we have a leaked promotional piece of newspaper for about the Mavic 2. It looks like we're gonna have two different versions of this drone. We'll have the Mavic 2 zoom, which has a 24 to 48 millimeter zoom lens and can also have a dolly zoom effect which is that thing where it pushes in but then you widen the shot and it looks really cinematic it's pretty cool then we also have the dji mavic 2 pro which has a one inch hasselblad sensor which is going to be fantastic and i know every single person in the comments who thinks they know how to say it is going to tell me and i don't care i'm going to keep mispronouncing it the docile block it's now the kessel run camera you got a one inch kessel run camera sensor on there likely going to pay a pretty penny for it uh do you guys have a mavic pro or are you considering the mavic pro 2 let me know down in the comments, as usual, whether or not you're gonna be buying this thing. Moving on. Speaking of camera things, the Pixel 3 XL looks to have been leaked with a clearly white prototype that comes with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. The pictures were posted to XDA developers by a junior member, and it looks basically about what we're expecting out of the Pixel 3 XL. Personally, I'm not a fan that this thing is releasing because I just got my Pixel 2 XL, so I'm a little salty that, uh, you know, I'm already being obsoletized. Google is expecting to launch these phones in October, which gives us a few months of me still feeling like I have a current grade flagship. But since it doesn't have a notch and the Pixel 3 XL, if you look at that, has a Mac daddy of a notch. You got fat chin bezels. It, the new Pixel 3 looks like it's still gonna have the dual speakers on the front, which will be great. October, Pixel 3 XL. Are you guys excited? Probably not, let me know. Speaking of obsolescence, Intel's monopoly on Thunderbolt might be obsolete. In a video posted by Level 1 Tech's Wendell, has apparently gotten Thunderbolt to work on Threadripper because apparently the instruction set is not baked into the CPU. There's some stuff that's baked into the CPU that you can't quite override, so you can't do hot plug Thunderbolts, but you can get Thunderbolt working with a Threadripper system. We're gonna leave a link to the video down in the description, but also in the top right-hand corner for you to go check this out if you are at all interested in using Thunderbolt on a Threadripper system, which reset could be great for like audio professionals. Having 16 cores that are relatively inexpensive but then also able to get it like Thunderbolt expansion stuff for music production could be great. Let me know if you guys are interested in this. Do you want Thunderbolt on AMD systems? Because uh, looks like the good old folks over at Level 1 Tech are doing a great job of bringing everything to the mainstream people and not just keeping things locked down to an Intel piece of crap ecosystem. At least it's not as bad as Apple. Then speaking of things that aren't supposed to work on certain ecosystems, YouTube is finally bringing dark mode to Android. It looked like that was an iPhone exclusive for what was basically forever, but now we can darken our screens and not have a bright white light blare at us when we're trying to watch freaking YouTube at 3 a.m. because we can't sleep. Thanks YouTube for finally getting around to it. I look forward to it in the next update. My sarcasm's heavy, but my appreciation's real. More Threadripper stuff. It appears that the high-end flagship chip of the 2990 X has appeared at a Canadian retailer because the Frost Giants get everything first. It's the only way they stay cool is if they are in the icy lands of the 
Frost Pixies. The price comes in at a $2,400 Canadian pesos, which equates to about $1,800 US dollars. Whether or not that's what the price is gonna be in the US has remained to be seen. There were rumors floating around that it might be $1,500 US, which with how weak Canadians are, it could make sense that their price is a lot higher, or $1,800 is about right. I mean, you're only paying 80% more for 100% more cores. The price is a little wishy-washy there, but we'll have to see whether or not this is gonna actually play out to be a reality. What do you guys think of the price? Is this too much, too little? 32 cores, 64 threads, probably gonna be able to clock up to four gigahertz if you get a decent enough cooler. We'll see how this works out. Friends, we might have some good news about RAM prices. It appears that 2019 might be our year with an oversupply of DRAM expected to come in about six months. So DigiTimes is reporting that recent DRAM capacity ramps by Micron and the other companies in order to uh, actually provide enough RAM during the undersupply and extreme price hikes that we've seen could lead to an oversupply in 2019 because they didn't start producing it fast enough soon enough and so they're gonna be left over with extra stock at the end of this year into the beginning of next year. So DigiTimes also reported that Micron is enjoying margins as high as 50% this year, but they're expecting those to slim down considerably by the end of the year, which I mean, for how much we're paying, the fact that the memory producers are getting 50% of the price, that basically equates for most of what we're paying extra. Why are people still buying RAM? If it's just going into their pockets and this isn't an actual issue, this makes me legitimately upset. This isn't just price fixing, this is them just taking giant profits, which is a completely different argument. I'm upset about this, I hope you guys are too. RAM prices are crazy to hear that they're making 50% off of a normal RAM kit is insane. But it looks like 2019 might be the year of retribution, so let's just all stop buying RAM now so it comes sooner. Is that how we start a protest? We get people on our bandwagon, stop buying RAM, stop buying RAM, too overpriced, too overpriced. Did you recently buy a Z370 motherboard? Did you recently upgrade to Coffee Lake? Well, my friends, I have bad news for you. The rumors of a Coffee Lake refresh are just coming in hot and heavy, hotter than hot news, which isn't even possible, but that's what I said. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for hyperbole right now. It appears that a leaked document from Asus is basically confirming everything that we've already thought was confirmed in that we are getting Z390 motherboards. So they have listed the Z390 Prime A, the Z390 Plus, the Z390 ROG, Maximus 11 and all of those going on up to everything that you need from an Asus board. We got tough brand, we got everything in this leaked list. It's unclear whether Z390 will be worth buying. It appears that they're just gonna be adding the features that B360 boards already have, that Z370 boards are lacking. So it's not like you couldn't already have this feature set, but you couldn't get it with overclocking previously. But you could get boards that had those features as add-ons. So whether or not like you should feel buyer's remorse for picking up a Z370 right now, probably isn't gonna happen as far as what we could tell. Like even the VRM situation is gonna be basically about the same as Z370. It might be upgraded, it might not. We'll have to see, we don't have enough info to actually detail that for you guys right now. But just so you know, don't buy motherboards right now. New ones are coming out, which would hopefully at least mean Z370s will come down in the near future. And in case they do, we'll have them on UFD deals for you to check out. Cheeky little plug, go check out UFD deals. Love you too, moving on. So we got motherboard news, but in case you're wondering about the CPUs that are coming with the Coffee Lake refresh, we've already talked about how we're gonna get an eight core 16 thread with the 9900K. We're gonna get an eight core, eight thread, non-hyper-threaded i7 with the 9700K. And now it appears that not only do we have the info on that, we have some benchmarks as well. So this is a leaked benchmark from 3 d Mark's Time Spy showing off a genuine Intel CPU is the name showing eight core 16 threads, and we can nearly guarantee that this is the 9900K that we can see is performing here. So the CPU listed on 3 d Mark can nearly be guaranteed to be the i9-9900K coming in with eight cores and 16 threads. And for those of you who are wondering whether or not your board is obsolete, like I just mentioned, it seems to be running on the ROG Strix Z370. That could be a Z390 that hasn't been updated to be reflected in 3 d Mark, but it also probably could be the Z370. Those will likely support the Coffee Lake refresh chips. Now for turbo clock, it looks like it's coming in at five gigahertz. Yes, my friends, an eight core 16 thread, five gigahertz chip 
with a reported stock clock of 3.1 gigahertz, which five gigahertz is insane. Intel should likely still retain the king of the crown for gaming CPUs. And if we look at the score on the Time Spy, you can see that it came in with a CPU score of 10,719 points when the Ryzen 7 2700X, AMD's closest competition, scores about 1,500 points less than that. So at least on a benchmark level, it appears the 9900K is 16% better than the 2700X. The thing that we will likely know very shortly is that it will probably come in at more money considering the 2700X is the same price as the 8700K. I would suspect that since Intel's labeling in i9 and they're also soldering it, that they are definitely going to increase the price. I could see the i7 9700K costing about 20 to $30 more and then the i9 9900K coming in at $500 hundred dollars more than the 8086k which just released a few months ago obviously that's speculation right now don't take my word for for gospel at this point but i can i can basically guarantee that you're going to have to pay more for this performance but once again it appears that intel is going to remain at the top of the hill with their crown firmly intact at least until seven nanometer comes with ryzen which is what we talked about in friday's hot news episode which you can check out right there in case you're interested and that's going to wrap up hot news for today be sure to let me know what you thought of this article that article anything we talked about today down in those comments below don't forget ufd deals is down there if you want to save money on tech stuff while also supporting the channel be sure to get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content hot news included sure smash the like button hit it really hard couple of times just to be sure uh make sure that we uh stay afloat because that's that's the buoyancy level here on youtube is that like button and that's gonna wrap it up for me i'm brett with the ufd tech channel thank you so much for watching and i'll see your smiling faces again in the next video cheers